interest rates on the rise, the Federal Reserve raising its key benchmark to fend off inflation. Situations that we're seeing right now are just not going to resolve themselves in 2022. Tonight, we're breaking down how this will impact your family and your wallet. Layoffs at DPS. What this means for the district is it cuts dozens of jobs at its central office. And fights at a Colorado middle school for all to see on social media. Sometimes it looks like they're having fun doing it. Other times it looks angry. Parents tell Denver 7 they're worried the district isn't doing enough to address the violence. I want there to be a safe place for my kid to go to school. Get ready to pay higher interest on your loans. The Federal Reserve is raising its benchmark rate in an effort to curb rising prices for things like food and gasoline, even lumber. Now, the half point increase announced today is the Fed's largest hike in more than 20 years. More hikes are expected as the Fed tries to fend off our worst inflation in decades. So what does the Fed raising this rate mean for you and your money? Denver 7 CB Cotton talked with an expert today to find out CB. And Shannon, first we have to ask, why do the feds increase interest rates? The answer is sort of complex, but in short, it keeps consumers and businesses from spending as much, and that eventually helps prices drop. But after talking with experts, I can tell you it's definitely going to take some time. And uh, asparagus. Paige Arnold says at his age, he's learned a thing or two. A lot of young people eat food just for the fun of it. In his golden years, he now shops and eats with a purpose. Older people, they don't need to eat as much. So his grocery lists are short and simple. And that's a good thing right now. The prices are up. Like the rest of us, Arnold is hoping for relief. Perhaps it's finally coming. The Fed's raising the interest rates. On Wednesday, the Federal Reserve raised interest rates by half a percentage point. The goal, to get a grip on the highest inflation the country has seen in 40 years. But they're also trying to maximize employment and create an environment for economic growth. What they did today was really thread the needle. So what exactly does this mean for you? Well, borrowing costs are going to go up. So you'll pay higher interest rates for credit cards, student loans, car loans, adjustable rate mortgages, and home equity lines of credit. To break it down, take credit cards for example. Every time the interest rate increases, if you only pay the minimum monthly payment, it's going to take you longer to pay off the debt, and you'll pay more interest cost. DU Finance Professor Chris Hewen has this one recommendation. Now is a good time to use excess cash to pay down your home equity line of credits as well as your credit card loans before those interest rates really start to impact your budget. So will the Fed's decision make prices drop this year? Hewen says costs will likely get worse before they get better. Situations that we're seeing right now are just not going to resolve themselves in 2022. But the good news is, is that 2023 looks much better. Arnold says at his age, he's content to wait while knowing one thing. People are spending more money. It's certainly true. Today, the Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell said the agency will most likely raise rates again in their next couple of meetings, which are slated for June, July and September, which means by the end of the year, the federal funds rate could reach 2% or higher. In the newsroom, I'm CB Cotton, Denver 7. All right, CB, thank you. And the Fed's announcement sent stocks soaring today on Wall Street. That half a percentage point increase eased some minds. There were fears the central bank would go for an even larger rate increase. And when that didn't happen, stocks had their biggest gain in two years. Layoffs announced at Denver Public Schools. The district says it will be cutting dozens of positions all at its central office. The district is looking for ways to trim its budget as the number of students in its schools falls dramatically. Denver 7's Rob Harris is joining us in studio tonight with what this means for DPS. And that's a big question. And the superintendent of DPS told us back in February that the district would have to reorganize because enrollments projected to decline by 6% by 2025. We were told reorganizations would not include cuts to employees who work directly with students. So that's teachers, bus drivers, food service workers. But now we're starting to learn who is going to get cut. At least 76 positions are being cut at the district. DPS says 15 are executive level jobs, like deputy superintendents and executive directors of programs. The rest are various workers with the district central support team. It's unclear right now what specific roles from the team have been cut, but the team includes the Department of Technology Services, English Language Acquisition, Culturally Responsive Education, and Human Resources. DPS says these cuts will save $9 million for its general fund. 
We have not yet been told by the district what exactly the $9 million saved will be spent on, but Superintendent Alex Morero is expected to talk about that at a Board of Education meeting tomorrow evening. He has said the district wants to distribute funds to drive greater equity in student experience. Right. I know today that you spoke with one of the employees who's let go. Yeah, and she was understandably emotional. She didn't want to speak yeah. on camera or share her name with us publicly, but she did want to share that these cuts hurt. She feels the central support team is underappreciated because they do a lot to support students both directly and indirectly, especially during the pandemic when many of them have served as substitute teachers, even joining in for lunch and recess right, monitors right, right. as they needed during the staffing shortages. All right, so what happens next? Well, that is really the $9 million question, I suppose. Uh, the district says that those who have had their positions cut are welcome and encouraged to apply for other positions that are open right now. But the woman I talked to today said she thinks many more cuts could be coming as the district deals with this mm. dropping enrollment. And we'll see what the superintendent says tomorrow. All right, Rob, thank you. And as we mentioned, DPS has seen its student enrollment numbers drop and taking a closer look now, According to the state, more than 88,000 students were enrolled at DPS schools in the 2021-2022 school year. That is down from 89,000 students last year, last school year, and down from 92,000 students the year before. For school districts, fewer students mean less funding from the state and federal government. Well, tonight, parents in the Cherry Creek School District are sharing concerns after a disturbing video is circulating on social media. And I do want a word of caution here. This is tough to watch. It shows a student at Liberty Middle pinned to the floor as he is attacked in the hallway by another student. Now, if that wasn't disturbing enough, an Instagram account has been asking Liberty students to share videos of fights. Parents wishing to stay anonymous tell Denver 7 their calls to the school have gone unanswered and they're questioning what the district is doing to address violence. The next time my son comes home from school, he could be seriously injured just like the kid was in the video because it seems like nobody's doing anything. In a statement to Denver 7, the district said in part, we are aware of social media accounts similar to this one popping up at various times throughout the year for many of our middle and high schools. Each time a site such as this is reported to us, we work to take the site down and make contact with students. Protests at the University of Denver today. Dozens of students rallied over the departure of professors of color at the Graduate School of Professional Psychology. Students say they were moved to act when a professor said they'd be leaving for a better opportunity in California. One student we talked to says moving forward, he'd like DU to give its students a louder voice in the hiring process. They schedule these events, they schedule these, uh, you know, these interviews for days when none of us are here. We have to go, we have to work at clinics around the city, we have to be a part of the community. And so we can't just come back, you know, at 2 o'clock on a Tuesday and say, yeah, we can sit down for, for this interview for an hour and a half. So we need a voice when it comes to the hiring process because right now, as we have had people be interviewed who are people of color, and I would have loved to see them uh, as a part of our faculty. DU leaders tell Denver 7 they are working with students and faculty to address these issues. And in the meantime, the school has launched a workload equity task force to take a closer look at the issues raised. Wild horses and off-highway vehicles go head-to-head -to -head tonight in northwestern Colorado. The Bureau of Land Management is looking to expand the off-highway vehicle program in the San Juan Basin, uh, Basin west of Craig. That's one of the few places in the nation where wild horses roam. At a meeting tonight in Craig, the BLM said the off-highway vehicles will not be a disruption to the wild horses. Horse advocates disagree. It does come at the expense of the wild horses. The OHV people are supposed to stay in the lower part of the basin, the southern portion, like a southern third or half, but they don't. They just move all over. Now this has become an even more contentious issue in recent days. Since last week, more than 130 wild horses have died from a disease outbreak at a holding facility near Canyon City. Denver 7 will be watching the debate closely as it unfolds, so expect more coverage on our air and on the DenverChannel.com. A very troubling story out of Aurora. A man is in jail tonight accused of running over and killing a woman that he had just met. Police say the woman was found in a parking lot near Nome Park on March 4th. She told police she had just met Jordan Howard and that he drove her to the parking lot before choking her unconscious. And she says Howard then pushed her out of the vehicle and ran over her. 
Well, hours passed before she was found, and then police say the woman was hospitalized multiple times before dying from her injuries more than a month later. Tonight, Howard is in custody on suspicion of first degree murder, and investigators fear that Howard may have attacked other people, and they are asking any possible victims out there to contact Aurora Police. A Wheat Ridge police officer stabbed in the line of duty is thanking Coloradans for their support tonight. In a letter shared on the police department's Twitter page, Officer Alan Fisher says the support, prayers and kind words I have received from the community I serve have been amazing. He says I look forward to serving you again in the future. Now, Fisher was stabbed last month responding to a report of a suspicious truck at an RV park. The man accused of stabbing him tonight is charged with attempted murder and assault. This has been really beneficial moisture, but now it's time for sunshine and warmer temperatures. Giving hope to hamsters. My dad actually had the idea, why don't you start a nonprofit? And I thought he was joking at first. How one boy's love for these animals led to a mission to make sure they find a loving home. Plus, it was the abs who looked more like predators on Tuesday. Now they're looking to repeat their dominating performance on Thursday.